Hello everybody, this is Jamsire from the Tascam User Forums and I'm going to be showing you how to use the User Defined Layer in Cubase. Well, this is how I use the User Defined Layer in Cubase. I am using Cubase SX3. Okay, I don't have 4, I haven't used 5 or whatever. But I wanted to show you guys how I do it. And I'm sure that you have the same parameters in Logic and Digital Performer and Ableton Live. And I think you can just get a general idea of how I use this uh, great feature in the board. Okay? So the first main thing you have to understand is how do you set this thing up? Well, you got to go to whatever your devices menu. So again, I'm talking from the Cubase point of view. So I'm going to devices. In devices, you'll see I have generic remote. In other words, I made my own custom remote. Okay? So the first thing you see here are these faders 1 through 16. And the MIDI controllers, as you can see, you can change them to whatever you want, but I have them set on controller. And they go from channels 1 through 16. Okay? Now, the address is MIDI channel 7. They're just saying, which controller address are you using? As you can see, PAN is 10. We all know our MIDI uh, controller messages. The top part is the input, and then where do you want it to go? So in other words, I want fader 1, which is controller uh, 1, I want that fader to go to the VST mixer, which is this, and I want it to go to this track, which is the first track, guitar opening, which is this, and then I want that action to be volume. I also created these uh, mixer channels, so I did that with the simple add button, so you can just add your own type of controller thing. Here, I also made a, a very special file. If I, if I hit export, I can, uh, this is what it's really called. It's called the Azona Setup because it's specific to this particular song, how I want this setup to be. Okay? So you can import two. You can import any of these different setups depending on what kind of song you have and so forth. So I'm sure you can do this in all your programs. I'm not trying to sell Cubase to anybody. Okay? So, again, I have this setup. Now, the big thing, what the big problem was, how do you get from 1 through 16 how do you go and get to 17 through 32? Well, you have to add a line. So you hit add, and what you're doing is you're adding another fader. It's kind of funky. I can't get this to go alpha, so that's why it's down at the bottom. Don't ask me why. But uh, fader 17, controller, um, controller, and then MIDI channel 1. But from the board, it's the board is always going to send out MIDI channel 3. Why? In the control change mixer setup in the board, it has that. So the first 16 channels are MIDI channels 1 through 16, and they're all corresponding to controller number 7, which is volume. However, 17 through 32 MIDI channels 1 through 16 are all MIDI controller number value 3, which basically stands for nothing. So... I just thought that was kind of weird, but it does kind of make sense here because Cubase is transforming what it receives because it learns it. It receives from the board on MIDI channel 1, message number 3 for fader number 17. This is what I'm telling it. Fader number 17 and 18. At the bottom of the second half of the screen, here are faders number 17. I want them to go to the uh, VST mixer and I want them to control the bass drum track. See if you click on these all the tracks that you have in Cubase are there. Okay so I have the bass drum and I want it to be volume. Same thing here snare drum and I want it to be volume. Okay and so that's what's going to happen. Now I hit um, I'm just going to hit cancel because it's already set up. Uh, uh, let me go back there for a quick second. In device setup, I also want to show you that I have everything set on MIDI machine control slave. Okay, and this is how I'm getting the machine to just uh, control Cubase. What am I doing here? I have Cubase set on sync. If I had the Mackie control set up in the remote layer, I wouldn't need that. But what I am doing, because I want to bring all this stuff into the channels, into the first 24 channels of the board, and I want to use their EQ and their the board's uh, dynamics and things like that, I am letting the board send MIDI time code out to Cubase because I am using the automation from the board. I am not using the automation built in Cubase. Okay? I am mixing things live as I hear them go down. I am doing that because I'd like to have the automation and, in fact, to places. 
first place being in the mixer, have my flashcard, compact flashcard. I can just record the automation and save it. And then when I want to have it, let's say I'm sending one of you guys like the mix and I want to send you the automation, I can now take the automation from the board and record it into Cubase by just obviously activating any one of the right screens and everything will just work in sync. So let's just hear this piece real quick. Guitar opening. I'm moving the faders as you hear them. Check out the soloing from the board. You won't see it on the screen. I mean, I could activate it, but I don't care because I'm getting it from the board. My kick drum. Now again, um, I'm going to be using the EQ from the board. Quickly, I'll show you that just so you can hear it audibly. Um, I'm just going to change um, the bass up a little bit. So I'm just going to what you're going to be hearing is me controlling the EQ of the bass only using the EQ in the board, not a plugin. There's no plugins activated. Here is the bass channel. It's a stick bass. That was not pretty. Sorry about that. I didn't want to do that. <laughs> anyway, I'm not even going to edit that out because that was just kind of funny. But anyway, so here is um, the stick bass. And I'm just going to solo it here in the machine here. Play it from here. And now I'm going to activate just the EQ on it. Do a very extreme EQing here, but I want you to hear this is just the EQ from the board with the pan f uh, faders, the encoders showing me the EQ right on the board. So I'm just doing it by eye. So that's enough of that. So again, all I'm saying is I try mixing out of the box using the DM4800 because it can in fact do that. It can in fact do that and I think you should try it. Use it to find layers is awesome. And once you understand using the MIDI out of the board, you know, just get a MIDI through box. It's something to go into the computer and just designate that. And I think you'll be very, very interested in how this kind of stuff really, really works. I love it. And I love kind of having that old school feel, the automation I've always wanted. But instead of just having two tracks come out and just mixing in the box, I have all my tracks coming out and I can hear them all go down and take it out to a summing mixer or something else, something really cool that I like. So uh, any other questions, just hit me up on the, on the thread just try it. All I'm saying is try it. I'm not the genius at this. I just, this is just something that I prefer to do. Again, each channel from one through 24, you know this from one through 48, EQs, dynamics, and effects. I use all the auxiliary returns. I am very fortunate to have some nice effects here. Good old school stuff, Intel effects, DP4, and just getting some super awesome effects going through the auxiliary returns. So I've got eight specific effects going through there then plus the other two built in okay so that's literally 12 channels of effects so i think that's a really cool thing and makes the board bigger and if you want to use your pro uh, your plugins i think it's cool but maybe you want to render them or something 
and then just let the board take care of the rest. Okay, so this is Jam Sire, Tascam Forums. Like I said, I dig it. I hope you do too. Thanks a lot, guys, for letting me uh, talk to you. Bye-bye.